Okay, good morning. I think it's safe to say today we're gonna go ahead and transfer over our basic Lancer seat and put in the Brom because as you can tell we've got the driver in but we still need to do the passenger so there was a little bit more steps to do for the passenger side so for today's video we're gonna go ahead and discuss that and show you what needs to be done so let me show you the two seats real quick if you did not watch the last video I'll also leave that down below driver seat basic Lancer seat so this is a lot slimmer more aggressive looking and here's the stock one okay I will say first off between the two seats the stock Lancer seat is a lot more comfortable but that's what it's designed to be. The other one's a lot more sturdy, okay? We'll put that out of the way. And the Brom seat's also a lot tighter against your body compared to the Lancer seat as well. So if you guys were wanting something more comfortable, I probably wouldn't go this route, but if you want something more stylish and more supportive for like aggressive driving or whatever you want to do for your car, I'd recommend the Brom seat. So with that, with that being said, let's go ahead and move forward. One more thing, when you are upgrading from these seats to that, you will also lose your side airbag, so the Brahms do not have one in there. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and pop off all these little caps. And you're going to be able to get to a little bolt that's holding down your seat and to the car. Two in the front and two in the back. Just use a basic little flathead and they pop right off. All right, so with your 14 millimeter socket, wrench, or whatever you guys have, you're gonna go ahead and remove these bolts. And again, don't forget this L bracket. So there's your seatbelt comes right off. Now that all your hardware bolting the seat to the car is removed, you're going to go ahead and pop that hood and you're going to disconnect your negative portion of the battery because you do not want an airbag exploding in your face. And if my memory suits me correct, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a 10 millimeter. So now that the battery is disconnected, go ahead and open up the door. Make sure the battery is indeed off. No power is running through. Can't turn the car on. No gauges coming on. Yeah, this, com this car is completely dead right now. Which of course is what you want. Okay, so we have the chair lifted up. Here are a whole bunch of different connectors, okay? Don't ask me what they do. There is one, two, three, four, five on the side. That is a lot more than was on the driver's side. But what I'm gonna guess is these two are for your seat sensors, which I'll talk more about that once I get this out of the car. This white one, I'm not too sure what that is. This black one right here next to the airbag, this is gonna be for your seatbelt, so we'll transfer over the seatbelt. And here's the yellow, which is obviously going to be your airbag system. So, total of probably three connectors with the two sensors. And one last thing, I covered this in the other video as well, but unlike all these other connectors, they're gonna be really easy to remove. The airbag one is a little different. Let me go ahead and zoom in for you. But right here, there's that little white clip at the top. You're going to go ahead and slide that forward. So take a little flat head. It slides forward like that and pops right off. And of course, then again, everything else can just come off like normal. Okay, seat is removed. This is what remains. Four mounting points. Got your harnesses to the seat. Got my two bolts for the front, two bolts for the rear, and we're gonna go ahead and work on mounting brackets. So let's go ahead and remove these four nuts. They're gonna be a 10 millimeter. We'll start with that and see what happens. Okay, as you can tell, this hangs over up into under here, so we might have to remove this section. And then over here, same thing on this side. So let's just go ahead and show you guys what we're working with here, right? So here's this harness. It comes underneath and it's actually attached to this little plastic piece. We'll just pinch through together and push out. And then it routes all the way up to underneath here. And this is where the weight sensor is. So it looks like we actually do have to remove all four of them. So there's one here, two, 
three, and four. And from the looks of it, it looks like they're another 14 millimeter. So let's go ahead and get those removed. Update, they are indeed 14 millimeter. All right, I lied. So on addition to those 14 millimeter, you come to the side, there are a pair of Phillips screw sets on each side. So a total of four, remove those, and this should slide right off, along with this weight sensor. Screws removed. And uh, let's see. Yep. This comes right off. It exposes that sensor right there. And the one there on the bottom as well. So once you get the sliders off, now you're going to come over here, and these are going to be 13 millimeters. So you can remove those. Get your 13 millimeter head, and the sensor comes right off just like that. And in case I try to mount this on the new seats, remember blue is going to be your front left, and the gray tab is going to be your front right as you're sitting down. Yep, correct. Okay, now that we have everything kind of floating off the side, all those sensors are off. It's just being attached by this harness right here. So this one right here, the black one, that's gonna be for your seat belt. Because if we follow it, it runs through and comes over to our seat belt. So we'll go ahead and remove that. This will all come off. Figure out how to route this through. It's just on here with zip ties. So we'll trim all of that off and we should be good. We'll get rid of the yellow airbag because we no longer need it. We'll just keep this, keep this sensor, and put that towards the car. Don't go canceling me, but when I got the seat removed, I actually found a pair of my dikes, which are coming in super handy right now. Now I can cut those zip ties a little easier. So I was just using scissors, risking cutting cable and things of that nature, but found my dikes. So we'll go ahead and use that. Cut off those remaining zip ties, get that seat belt removed, and move along forward. forward. Now that all the zip ties are removed, we'll go ahead and route this through. So obviously you can't pull that buckle through this little tight area. So just be careful not to nick anything when you're pulling this through. Just like so, feed it on through. And just like this, We'll be almost done. If I could do this with one hand, you guys could do it with two. Let's go. Voila. All right, for the seatbelt itself, this is gonna be an 18 millimeter nut. There we go. And voila. And last but not least, like I mentioned, we do not leave this airbag anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to snip this off, pull this off this bracket, remove the sensors from the seat, bring our seatbelt, throw that in the car, and then we'll work on mounting the uh, new brackets to the Braum seats. So right there was probably the hardest, actually not the hardest, but the most time consuming portion of the seat install. So, and then again, this is only if you want to make sure you have no dash lights on your car. If you don't care about lights, then you probably don't need to do all of that. But since I don't want the lights, that's the way we're gonna go ahead and do this. So to be honest, I don't even think we need these little rails anymore because each sensor has its own little nut and bolt that can seed into a hole somewhere. Um, and then this will also save you some weight and this might interfere with our new brackets that we're gonna install. So um, what we're gonna go ahead and do is cut off all the zip tie mounting points and get rid of these brackets. And voila, a lot cleaner I think. So this is how it's gonna work. There's that white one, it's going to connect into here. It's going to be towards the bottom of the seat. And then here's our four locations for the weight sensors. So if I can't mount it up to the bracket, then we'll figure out how to stow these away without making too much noise underneath there, clunking around. We're going to go ahead and short this out, show you how to do that. And then this one right here is for your seatbelt that we removed. All right, as you can tell, brought the seat inside the house, forward facing this way. First thing you're going to notice is that there are four little bolts that you're going to have to go ahead and remove. It should just be hand tight. If not, you're going to need a T40 bit and you can go ahead and get these out. So we'll go ahead and remove these real quick. And here is our planted bracket. So you want to make sure you go ahead and order the Evo 10 
And right there, as you can see, this is for the passenger. The other one said driver. And then you're also going to want this planted logo facing forward. So that's how it's going to sit on the back of your seat. Sits so just like this. And you're basically going to align everything up to a mounting point. So once you have those T40 bolts removed, you're going to keep these washers in place. You're going to go to your good old bag, get your sliders out. Maybe two sets. And they come with your seats. So along with these sliders, you have your handle to adjust your seat forward and back. So let's go ahead and configure this. So keep in mind, they come assembled like this together. And what I did is I slid it out to show you these little teeth that are on here. So you want these teeth to be down facing towards your seat, just like so. So if you have them upwards, you have them incorrect. Teeth towards the seat. Okay, after a lot of maneuvering everything, I finally got it situated. So there are gonna be some modifications for this. Usually on your seats, you'd like to pull up to slide back and forth. However, the way this bar was, it wasn't gonna really work out. It was hitting this and I didn't wanna bend this and risk messing up these sliders. So end of story, this is how I have everything bolted up, okay? So like I said, the teeth are pointed towards the seat. You're gonna utilize the bottom of the three holes, okay? Bottom of the three holes. Look up here towards the top, here's the slider extended. So we're going to pull this, pull this down. So I had it pulled down so I could show you guys right here. And out of the two ovals, now out of the two ovals, it's gonna go towards the lower one. That's where that top one's gonna go, okay? Just like so. But um, yeah, that's how I have this mounted up. Working pretty well so far. So the sliders, they do work. Obviously, I can't show you with one hand. Okay, sliders are underneath this bracket. Here's our planted bracket, forward facing this way. So we're basically gonna get lined up through the bottom middle ones and through these top middle ones. You can see the hole through there now. So let's go ahead and grab our hardware, mount it on there. All right, here is our seat all assembled. Got the planted bracket sliders installed and uh, ready to go ahead and throw it in the car. Okay, brackets are all done. Got the seat back here in the garage. Right here is gonna be where your seatbelt's gonna mount to. So right here, here is that seatbelt harness that we had already removed. It's gonna bolt up just like that. We'll, part, we'll probably put it on the inside, give you more room. And then I actually had to go to the store in my last video and pick up these bolts right here. So there's seven sixteenths, okay. But yeah, so I had to pick these up from AutoZone, O'Reilly, something like that. So again, these are the four, seven sixteenths, 14. And look at that, it's so humid, the camera's starting to fog up. And voila, just like that. So there was a little washer that came with the seat. I have it right here between the bolt. Let you swivel it around a little bit. So now that, that is all connected, we can go ahead and tape off our sensors just so it doesn't, you don't hear any clinking, clocking around in the car since we don't really have a way to bolt them up to this. So that was a failed experiment. I was gonna, instead of just taping these up and doing it that way, which I'm gonna have to do anyways, I was gonna try to mount them up here through these little slotted brackets, just like so. But one, I don't know if it's gonna clear the legs, so it might get in the way. It's still gonna be unfunctionable right now. And two, they actually slide out anyway, so like this one, I had it bolted on and that slides right through that slot so kind of pointless to do so what we're going to go ahead and do is just tape them tape all these sensors up in tape still it underneath and pop a zip tie up to here and uh yeah that's what we're gonna have to do it was worth trying though it would have uh secured it a lot better i think in my opinion but this other way is going to work as well all right, so all I did to buffer noise of clinking, clanking is I put some like, uh, they call it gore tape, but basically what it is is gasket tape, and it's just gonna create a little buffer, so if I hit them together, you're not gonna hear that clinking around. It's pretty thick tape. So that's all I did, and I'm gonna be mounting this towards the bottom of the car, and then, or towards the bottom of the seat, and uh, that'll be it for that. And we'll go ahead and connect the other connector, and this should be working flawlessly. Just won't be working for the car itself because these sensors aren't going to be attached to the seat, so they're not going to really read anything. 
It's just going to prevent the airbag light. Now, if you're driving something that's going to be your daily driver and you have a passenger in your seat at all times, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this. There might be other ways. I just haven't seen them posted. Um, but yeah, so since this, but since this isn't my daily driver, most of the time I'm driving by myself. Um, I'm okay with doing that. If I take if I take the family anywhere, we usually take one of the other cars, so really not too big of a concern for me, but it all, all depends on your situation, honestly. Just something to keep in mind. All right, real quick, so I can show you guys what's going on. So I got everything laid out. Here is that red connector, gonna go towards your heat, your seat sensor, or weight sensor. Snap that back in place. Pop those red things forward. That's it for this one. This again is gonna be for your seatbelt and your airbag. Let's go ahead and show you how to close out this airbag sensor. So like I showed in the other video, you're going to use your 1 watt little resistor. I'll leave these down in the description box below. They do work. I have had that on the car for about a week now. No lights have popped up so I can guarantee you that these work. So let's go ahead and put it in. So basically one pin is going to go through one hole of that and the other pin is going to go through the other and it's going to go ahead and arc itself out. Alright just like so. Make sure it's fully seated in there. If you're not doing it fully seated, it may not read. So you'll know because you'll feel the bottom of it when you put those pins in. And then we're just going to go ahead and tape over that and leave it as is. All right, all taped up. Good to go right there. All right, here we are inside the car. Here's our good old handy dandy seat belt. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in now. Kind of just like so. Here the audible pop click. So that is connected. That's connected. This is now connected. Seat sensor is connected. Airbag is cut off. So that's basically all we got to deal with in here. And you can just kind of stuff all these back in here. Kind of make it look a little cleaner. Less things fumbling around. Which you don't want to really have to deal with. And now we can officially bolt the seat and there is one little thing I want to show you guys back here on that back bracket for the passenger side only having to deal with the seat belt so uh, let's go ahead and get everything in place all right so here we are in the back here's the seat bracket obviously here is the end of the seat belt it has this little bracket and what you want to do is going to go ahead and seat that seat belt bracket underneath that seat bracket let me go ahead and do it real quick and show you all right, and that's exactly how it's going to sit. Okay, so seatbelt bracket, seat bracket, bolted down together, just like that, and it'll allow you to have a functional seatbelt. All right, one bolt, two bolt done. Okay, first glimpse, we officially have both seats in. Hooray, and they look pretty stock, right? They kind of look like they belong in here. But let's go ahead and reconnect that battery and check and make sure there's no codes on the dash. All right, I know this side is safe. Don't want to second guess any of that over there, so let's go ahead and turn the car on. So far, so good. The light is probably for the hood. Let me go shut the hood. Yep, let's see. Okay, hood is shut. Car's been running about a minute now, and no airbag lights. So I think it's safe to say we are A-OK. -okay. Two Brom installs, done, and I'm pretty happy. All right, well, there you have it. That's how to install your passenger seat here on our Lancers to avoid the airbag light installation of everything, transferring over harnesses and X, Y, and Z. If you guys, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this install, Please do not hesitate, lay a comment down below and I'll try to address them for you. So, and as always, if you guys found this video helpful or informative in any way, please smash that thumbs up button. Helps the channel grow and lets me know you guys care and found it informative. So other than that, I just want to say thanks for watching. Never live your life in idle and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.